top, top, top of the morning, the afternoon, and the evening. It's the Wayne World Podcast. You know what it is. We're going to get that raw. We're going to get that real, that uncut. It's over. What do I like you don't know we love God? I'm tired after that. <laughs> top, top, top of the water the afternoon and the evening to you, whomever you may be. Wherever you may be watching, looking, or listening, it's your boy Aunt Mo. Traveling out of Endo. Whoa. Let me with your big baby. And working on Wayne's World is my middle name. Yeah, tell me So, for those of y'all who ain't watching the video, I just gave you the best crumple of your life. All you got to do is go run the tape, go, go run the playback, folks. Go look at the episode. You know what I'm talking about? And you'll get it. You'll get some enjoyment out of that. But uh, yeah, man, we moving on, man. Welcome to the, another week of the Wayne's World Podcast. You know what I'm talking about? Coming live and direct from the couch with your boy Aunt Mo. I don't think I'm missing nobody. I don't think I miss anybody. Oh, hey, yeah, that boy Randy C. Mays in the building. How we doing, dog? Hey, Randy C. May, man, that's my whole name. You know what I'm talking about? I, got, I had yeah. something interesting happen to me, man. I hate to cut you off. You, had, you said you had had, had I had, had something some, interesting happen you to me. Had, you said you had had, had something I had had, had something interesting happen to me. Oh, well, now, what was yet? We we got our first piece of fan mail, bro. Oh, yeah? Yeah, bro. Okay. You know, yeah, I signed the Waynesville podcast up for the Prison Pen Pal oh. program. Oh, you talking about the Wallow Ministry. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man. Well, 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 what they, what they, now they have to dread lightly now. You know, we, you know, we believers. We love God. All, all, all the way from, from federal custody. You know about that fed time. Oh, hey, well, there was one time about that fed time. One, one thing about that fed time. That fed time, that day, day for day. day. <laughs> that fed time, day for day, folks. Well, day well, what, what that old felon had said. Hey, he had a question. He a believer? Yeah, he saved. He saved five feet with the Holy Ghost. You know, he ain't going there and turning to more Muslims. <laughs> 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 What what you got for me, folks? What he say? Hey man, his question was, man. Hey, hey, can we cuss mm-hmm. over here? I know I've been changed. Lord, no, I've been changed. The angels in. <laughs> <laughs> they ask me where I'm going. <laughs> Down by the riverside. Oh man, I hey listen, man. Your birthday coming up, man. You can cuss, man. Go on here, dog. Hey, but you got the bleep button ready? Yeah. Come on for that. Man, oh, you feel let me slip up. You ain't wasn't ready. You my gotta cue that finger. Hey, folk. I, I don't think I got a bleep. Okay, I ain't, I ain't gonna lie well, to you. Well, I ain't, I ain't gonna hold there. you. All right, you know man. what I'm about? But listen, man. <laughs> Welcome to the Ways World Podcast, man. I'm your host with the most is Aunt Mo. And we got my boy Randy C. May to the right of me. You know what I'm talking about? Coming back with another episode to bless your soul. You know what I'm talking about? And so for you first time in casual listeners, you come on back round now, you hear? Show them boys how you do it up in Harlem there, boy. And for you Waniacs. So man, I don't know. I ain't never watched Dragon Ball Z, but I just threw that old quarter song at your screen. You watch Dragon Ball Z? Negative. Oh, okay, cool. We on the same page. <laughs> Two peas in power. But yeah, uh, and so for you first time at Castle <laughs> listeners, you may be wondering what the Wayne's World podcast is about. I'm glad you asked. Listen, we des- we desire for this po- platform to be a safe haven for the believer. Okay, we want to water the world with grace, and we are targeting this to the modern male believer who desires encouragement. Who desires? What's the other two? Talking about the safe haven for the believer. Or are you talking about the faith, <laughs> fatherhood, and manhood? I just want to check. I just want to check see if he was on the same page, on the same accord as me. No, this is for the male modern believer who desires accountability, encouragement, oh, okay, and entertainment. Yes, sir. And we talk all things faith, fatherhood, and man. okay. My bad. That's why I was my boy coming on with it. Hey, we, hey, we just did some new stuff. Yeah, sir. We 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 on tour. You don't talk about we on like we want it. Don't worry about it. And so, man. With that being said, what is today's podcast about? One more time for your funky mind. My afflictions qualify me. Mm. <clears throat> Listen, man. A lot of the times we think that we're supposed to go through life unscathed. Wow. That nothing, like, it's supposed to be smooth sailing. You know, I've been working. That should be good enough. I have the talent. That should be good enough. I've been called. That should be good enough. Wow. But no, 
Listen, there's not a person that you can look at in the Bible who reached a level of achievement or accomplishment or, or, or got to the level that God called them to without going through something. Absolutely. And so that is equally as right in the era and days of times that we live in right now. <clears throat> and so I wanted to definitely let us talk about some of our afflictions, the things that have made us the men that we are, the fathers that we are. Yeah. And, and, you know, the believers that we are. And so, uh, with that being said, my question is, how afflicted are you? Mm. See, because sometimes the afflictions that we experience could stop us from actually walking into what God has called us into. Right. Everybody can't handle their afflictions. Even Paul said, if this thorn could be taken from me, right? But... And he asked three times. We don't know exactly what the thorn was. We don't know how far apart it was that he asked that the thorn be taken from him. But we know that he struggled with it. And after the third time, he said, forget it. It's my cup, folk. (laughs) I got a drink of it. And so everybody has a story. Everybody has an affliction. Everybody has dealt with something. And so it's important for us to understand what that is. (laughs) <laughs> I just thought you looked down because you could see who it was. Hey, Jay Elliott, you just interrupted my podcast, folks. I'll call you back. You know what I'm talking about? But listen, everybody has an affliction. Everybody has a story. And it's important that we go through it in detail yeah. with God first and then with people for right. us to see uh, who we are and who we ultimately are to be. Right. So when we look at uh, somebody like a Job even, so what what some people would call one of the greatest afflicted besides Jesus, you know, he went through things that a lot of us with an ounce of what he dealt with from the from the body boils to his friends accusing him to losing his family yeah. to losing his riches to, to he got to a place where he rather he he rather have just died never have never been born than to have went through the things that he went through because he, in his mind, saw that he was a righteous man. And he was. But what what we also have to understand is that not all the time that we go through tough times, it's because something's wrong. Sometimes the things that we go through are, number one, to be a testimony of how God kept us in the midst of our worst, darkest days. But then number two, it's for somebody else. The same as... When we get riches and blessings, it's to be a conduit. We're to be a conduit for those blessings to flow through us to touch other people. It's the same way that when we go through our our times of trials and testing, that we use those things to minister and to give hope to people who need to just endure in a season. Right. And so... What do you take from that, or what or what situations have you experienced where you've been afflicted? Right. Um, first, I think it's in First or Second Corinthians. Man, it says that in our afflictions, that there's there's this comfort that we give off. Mm. So, to the afflicted person who wants to isolate themselves and who doesn't want to take the phone calls from people who need your help, I tell you that you're wrong. If you're the afflicted person. And you're sitting back saying, well, I don't even have my marriage schedule. I'm divorced. I can't give any advice. This, that, another. You're qualified. Absolutely. They're looking at your experience and they're drawn to you because there's still a level of comfort that's given during your affliction, biblically. So I I look at my example is, is that I've never given more marital advice in my life than going through a divorce. And post divorce, mm-hmm. one of my and the fulfillment attached to it though was a, a couple that was about to get married. As my marriage is ending and theirs is beginning, the husband looked at me and is like, "Give me what you got," mm. because nobody wants to experience divorce, and me, I don't want to see nobody experience a divorce. So if I can give you just a little bit of insight, having seen the the before marriage, during marriage, and then post divorce life. I'm going to give it. And there's fulfillment in that. And I felt great about it because I can give them some insight because I've seen both sides of it. Right. And one of the things that people have to understand for us is one of the greatest afflictions that we've ever experienced is divorce. Yeah. And it's not to make it this overdrawn, overbearing, 
thing that we harp on all the time, but you're either going to grow and mature from that situation or you're not. There's some people that are divorced that I wouldn't dare ask advice. I don't want to hear what you're saying because it's bitterness. It's you didn't learn what God was trying to teach you from whatever happened. See, God doesn't create things sometimes, but he'll allow them. Yeah. And that's the thing that you'll learn from the story of Job is that God didn't create the afflictions for him to go through, but he allowed Job to be touched and tested because he was one of his righteous ones. Right. He knew that because of his faith in God that he wouldn't turn his back on him. Yeah. But what happens to us a lot of the times is we go through things as believers, especially new believers, hear me. We go through things in life and we think, that we are, well, I'm new in Christ. That means no bad times are going to come on me. And that's the furthest from the truth. If God himself endured the cross, what do you think that you would have to endure in this that's lifetime? It. That's good. Huh? And it's a, and it's, and it's necessary. God, like, even though God, like, even though Jesus was fully God, fully man, he still had to go through that to show himself, to show and prove. A lot of us don't understand that the blessings attached to our name, to our likeness, to our children, is that we go through that thing and we get burned, but we endure. The biggest the biggest thing that the Bible speaks of for the believer is the duration, being able to withstand that day, being able to get touched and hated on and, and, and mistreated and you still stand up. The righteous man falls seven times, but he gets up eight. There's, there's, there's this, there's this consistent message that I think God is is trying to tell us about endurance, about running our race, about what it really requires to be exalted and glorified. Imagine Jesus not being mature and being on that cross. What do you think would have happened? We're human, so we know exactly what would have happened. He would have said anything to get off of it. He would have he would have turned his back on God. Yeah. He said, Eloi, uh, and I used to know it by heart, uh uh Eloi, Eloi, Labas, Lama Sabachthani. Like, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Not meaning that he really thought God <clears throat> had turned his back, but in that moment, it's like God had to turn his back. Literally, he had to, because he had to, it was, it was, it was allegorical of him rejecting sin. And he had to represent that in that moment. He fully understood what was going on, but as fully being man, still had to endure it in pain and suffering. And some of us think that the next level of life for us doesn't come, it comes without trials, comes without testing, comes without divorce, comes without children going wayward, comes without bills being unpaid, comes without you name it. But the name of the game is endurance. It's keep going. It's fight the good fight. It's keep standing. And so we we begin with the end is that the the all the success, all the glory, all of the love, all of the things that God has for you is on the other side of pain. Yeah. Say it. can can you can, can you think of even another time or situation that wasn't necessarily attached to divorce but was uh, was attached to something that didn't feel so good that you had to endure? You know what I'm saying? That you can walk us through that ended up in, oh, yeah. in victorious light, essentially. <clears throat> Absolutely, man. I, I'll go back to 2016, man. I, I had a, a time period in my life where I had stuff going on at work, and then finances were crazy. But I, I was able to – it was stressful. It was tight. It was extremely uncomfortable, but I was at peace with it. Hmm. For me, I come up with my best ideas when my back is to the wall. Absolutely. If I got money in the bank, my entrepreneurial spirit is not as as, as um potent. It's not as potent <laughs> as when my money is low. Right. When my money is low, I can think of a million ways to get to it. <laughs> and so in that season, I literally had a journal and I came up with all these ideas that that I journaled. And so once I go ahead. Before you go into that, tell us about the state of Randy his life, his household at that time that made 2015 different from 2016. So during, during that time period, man, I had, I had, I had in January, no, December of 2015, 
I I decided to get super serious about church. Mm. So that was that was a, the dedication. That was the, the rededication. That was the beginning to serve. That was the the active in in the tithing. That was the yeah. the taking control of my household yeah. and being intentional about teaching my kids this that and other and and actually pastoring my household. And I was I was super involved in that man. And I mean, I, I read the word. I, I was reading the word daily. I was praying that me and God were having all this stuff like that. And that was, and then in March, probably about March, middle of March. Of, of 2016 stuff got shook up mm. i'm i'm grateful though i don't it, it's easy to say as an immature person it's easy to say when i was active in the world it wasn't this bad right that's a trick of the enemy absolutely my mindset though was there's there's, there's going to be a blessing or lesson in all this adversity and i'm glad that i took those time periods to actually get deep into the word because in, in the word there's peace and so then you, you look and look at what you lost and all the L's like that, or you can look at all you do have. And so some of the prayers that I prayed then, I literally live out today. So, and let's, for, for people who might be a little slow, let's recap that. So 2015, Randy was moving how he was moving, whatever that means. But he wasn't locked in. At all. In December, he makes a decision to, to live the way he believes God is calling him to live. Absolutely. There is no, there is no, what is the, what is it? There is no something without opposition. I can't think it's, it's something. There's no progress without opposition. So please believe at the end of the day, three months later, he faced some of the toughest times that he's ever experienced or, or it started to ensue at that time. Correct. As a believer, we have to understand that we are of no threat to the enemy when we're playing his game. And, um, when we out there and we <clears throat> doing whatever, living a sinful life, whatever that means to you, because God convicts us all at the level that we're at. Th- there's no need for the enemy to make anything. So you can actually make some more money. You could actually be experiencing a, la- a level of happiness, but deep within our hearts and our souls, there is a longing for a relationship with God. Absolutely. And so, that's why people who could be the richest in the world could kill themselves. Yep. That's why people who could have the best marriages ever could still be lonely inside because there's a connection to the creator that is only fulfilled by the one true God. And so him, I mean, I'm sorry, continue. So you're saying March, some things happen that that's the start of that year. And you, there's something that also gets sparked inside of you. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, so I, I I I was able to keep my head down. I was able to stay in the Word. I was able to stay active in church. Um, I was able to keep praying and studying and, and trying to lead my household. And I mean, it was it was only a for me. It was one of the rougher seasons of my life. I, I can't say that I had a tough life, but it was probably about right. eight or so months. And then and life turned around, man. And um, and things got better. What was what was what was the lesson that you believe God was trying to teach you in that season that you weren't getting beforehand? It it could have been several things. It could have been consequences for uh, for prior uh, sinful living. It it could always be that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then one that in 2016, one lesson I learned that I applied to my 2019 and going through a divorce was that you had, regardless of what it looks like. You have to keep going. Because, I mean, what what's the alternative? You walk away. You get mad at your circumstances. You get mad at God, and you walk away and try to do it by yourself. We've all tried that before. Right. It does not work out well. Letting, trying to do it on your own. Right. Letting letting temporary circumstances give dictate permanent, uh, you know, permanent it, lifestyle changes or situations like so you know a lot of people even that like could, could experience something like you experienced and then go kill themselves right could 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 experience the things you experienced in, in that season make their spouse or their children to blame you right. know what i'm saying mm-hmm. get in that situation and, and let something that because if i if, if i remember correctly a big portion of that came from you not doing something you didn't even do anything wrong on one level, on one of them levels right. and something that you experienced mm-hmm. on your job right. to say, and some people could walk away from that mm-hmm. bitter. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And so 
there's once again, y'all, there's something to endurance. When I look at personally for me, I look at the last, I'll say two years. <clears throat> when did I apply for DPD? Like maybe 17, 18, maybe something like that. Mm-hmm. And Randy can attest to it. Cause I had just met Randy around that time. One of the hardest times in my life. I'm talking about if there was a robbing Peter to pay Paul, if, if robbing Peter to pay Paul was a person, <laughs> <laughs> like that was me. Like there was some tough times that like, and it really didn't take until honestly speaking earlier this year for me to have a one-on-one with God to say, all right, I quit. I can't fight against myself anymore. Yeah. The car that I'm, I, I've, I've struggled to pay for since I had it when I was really not even wanting to. I was wanting to lease a car. I didn't want to get a car note, but I let my my my, my mouth get bigger than my my eyes or however they say that <laughs> saying. You know what I'm saying? Like me having to go through and evaluate every bill in my house. Right. You know what I'm saying? Certain things that for me to get to where I'm at now, where bless God, I don't have to ask people for anything. Like, that's just a small thing. I'm not saying I'm the richest man in the world. I'm saying <laughs> that's a big from thing, sir. check to check, I'm okay. Love it. Love it. Amen. It's a, it's a blessing when money can start reaching over now. Because some of us can attest to not being able to do that yet. Right. And that's no knock to you. It could just be the season that you're in. But how do you handle that season? Right. How do you endure? How do you treat people? Right? Do you still go to work with a smile or do they know that you're unhappy about some stuff? Yeah. Do you have an outlet of people to communicate with? I really, it's funny. Uh, and, you know, I just knew how I, it's, I, don't, I, I told another like a while ago, I'm like, I don't even know how we got here, to be honest. Because we went from, you know, Randy thought negative things about people based off of past circumstances. I'll just say that. We ain't going to go into detail. He thought negative things about people. So we never talked. But for that reason, mainly because I didn't know him like that either. And I don't talk to people I don't know. But from that to meeting with the children at at the cheer camp and then linking up uh, on something he didn't, he doesn't believe in, he didn't believe in it at the time. And I didn't necessarily mind it, but, you know, you just don't want people in your business a lot. You know what I'm saying? To how we even cap with each other, how it grew, you just don't know. You know what I'm saying? But... It allowed me, if I would have acted, if I wouldn't have acted outside of the norm, I wouldn't have had somebody to go to in tough seasons of life that that didn't judge me, that loved me for free, that was just a brother to me. You know what I'm saying? And so the the the, met, the bottom line to it is when you're in tough seasons, you have to learn to get outside of yourself. You doing what you've always did is going to grant you things that you've are always had. And there's a level of maturity that we all have to get to as believers to be able to reach the next phase of life. Because one of the next podcasts we're going to record is Season Forsakers. We're finally going to get to that. And it's important for us to understand how to just put some, in some seasons, you just got to put your head down and go through it. There's nothing that you can do to get yourself out of it. If God is trying to teach you something, if he wants to apply that pressure and put those screws on you, you either going to curse them or you're going to bless them. Yeah. That's that's those are your options. And so your afflictions will always qualify you. Like if you what did he, he just said it. There was somebody who was walking into something that he was walking out of that wanted his expertise that also doesn't like, you just don't ask people who've been divorced. It also has to speak to the character of a man. There has to be something about you that speaks to the speaks to something that says there's some value to be added. Right. You have to understand that when you're down, there's still some things that God wants to build up in you that are going to make you appealing to people to help them walk through their seasons of life. If you don't make it about yourself. Yeah. See, because if in that season of life, Randy was just like, oh, man, I can't believe this has happened to me. Now, he might have been having these moments, of course. Absolutely. But if you're projecting that out there, that's repulsive. Nobody wants to. It's some people in your phone that if you look, if they call right now, you're going to reject it. 
or you're going to watch it until it stops ringing. Mm-hmm. Yep. Because your spirit is, you're letting the things that happen to you become who you are. As believers, we're more than what happens to us. So, what you got, Doubt? Love it, man. Just, just don't think because you, you've experienced something. Off of it. It's it's old school thinking to be like, well, they went through such and such. They can't teach me nothing about marriage. They they ain't never had kids. They can't tell me nothing about kids. They can't. Don't don't just don't go for that. There are some people who have some with. If the Bible is saying that if we don't if we want wisdom, we should ask for it, and we ask for wisdom in areas that we know nothing about, meaning that He can give it to us. And that means there are some wise people in some areas that they may not have experienced success in. I pray for wisdom and fatherhood. This is my first round of being a, I pray for wisdom there. I pray for wisdom in leadership. I pray for wisdom in, 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 in navigating through singleness. I, it's what it is. So don't, don't, don't think you're disqualified because you've experienced failure or you're afflicted in a certain area. And understand that some of the things you're experiencing, you kind of brought it on yourself sometimes. Oh, Oh, another game, bro. Listen, let's not forget what David did, Bathsheba. Not only did your not only did your son die, but see, we're gonna somebody's gonna raise up in your house against you. Absalom slept with his wives, slept with his wives on top of the on the rooftop, tried to kill him. That wasn't because he was just living a holy life. No, you brought this against yourself with your with your deeds. What we also got to understand and, 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 not, and, and not ignore is that there are ramifications, there are repercussions, mm-hmm. there are consequences for the decisions that we make. And not every time it's just something that God is doing to build you up. No, right. sometimes you just got to pay the penalty. Right. And, and, and the maturity in us has to accept it. And any program you deal with, a big part of it in grieving, and alcoholism is accepting who you are, accepting where you're at. Talk about it. Because only then, can, look, you you don't know, listen, you can't start. Let's say you woke up and you were in a race. You can't, listen, you may not know where you started at, but you better know where you at. Because <laughs> I'm telling you, you may have to go 100 yards, you may have to go 10. But just be aware of where you're at to be able to get to where you're trying to go. Absolutely. This man, listen, the more that I mature and get older as a man in all phases of life, that that saying about the race is not to the swift. <laughs> and you just want to be somewhere so bad. Mm. Like you like you said on the, one of the other podcasts, just keep living, sir. Keep living. You're a first time parent and you feel like Mm-mm. you wrote the book on parenting. Oh, God. I have four. Randy has two. We we humbly say, just keep living. Just keep living. Your baby only up fifteen months, but but we have to hear all this stuff about what we should and shouldn't do. Just keep living. Keep living. Just wait. Just wait till they get to say stuff back to you. <laughs> and see and see what happens. Oh, you you can't receive a message from us because we went through divorce, and you ain't and you single. Just keep living. <laughs> Everything's great right now. I I pray it stay that way. But just keep living. Absolutely. That really that like that really applies. We have to not look at where we're at and and get comfortable in the season that we're in because that's when the devil is ever present. What did pastor say on Sunday? He said um you can be lulled into complacency and think you winning. And God got this all he got a whole new work he's trying to do. What if your affliction is your comfortability? Mm. What if your affliction is that you cool just where you at? Yeah. <laughs> That's a scary place to be. That's why my take on jobs is I was looking for one when I found this one. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't ever want to get comfortable somewhere that God doesn't want me to be. Right. Right. What's the story of the prodigal son? That boy went, took all his riches, was in a place that the Bible says he was in a place he dang well shouldn't have been. Yeah, man. He looked up like folk. 
<laughs> that boy was all off lead better. <laughs> lead better. Oh, you do not belong here. And then he had to go drag himself back home. Yeah. But the beautiful thing, the beautiful, the beautiful message to anybody out there who is somewhere that they shouldn't be, somebody who is going through a season of life that they don't know how to handle or that they can't contain is too much for you right now is God is there waiting for you to return. Yeah. Don't allow your afflictions to run you off. Don't do Sometimes that. in the story of the prodigal son, we could argue that his affliction was his youth. If you can't, if you can't humble yourself to, to, to listen to somebody, to be mentored, to be fathered, to be mothered in a season of life, to prepare you for the next level, you're going to be there for a while. I can guarantee it. You're, you're going to be there. That's why we have 40 and 50 year old men and women who still trying to live like they're 20 year olds. My God. I hate the 40 is the new 20, 50 is the new 30 stuff. No, it's not. No, you're 50. You're half a century, my guy, and that's cool. Because guess what? There are young guys out here who would love to learn from you if you would step into your proper role. You're not allowing your afflictions to be something that could be passed down to somebody. You bumped your head quite a few times, sir. We know it. You was just at an extended stay. You just got an apartment. And you're 49, and I'm not trying to, I'm really not trying to knock nobody, but I'm just saying it's about time that we learn how to mature and accept the roles that we're in and move forward into something that we could actually use to help somebody else. Yeah. Stop being so self centered. That's good, Doc. So your afflictions will always qualify you. Um, I'm, we're we, we not going to belabor the point. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to be before you long, <laughs> but we do. We, Hey, we always encourage you guys. Listen, if there's something that you're, that you're wanting, you want us to go into a different angle, right? Or you want us to go into some other details. Yeah. We're trying to be sensitive to our, our listener and our watcher, uh, to, to not just, you know, ramble on, but we can always say more. There's research that we can do. There are, I'm telling you, there's always something, and, and we believe it, that our gifting is speaking, and, and one of our giftings is speaking. We could always do this. And so we encourage you guys, if there's something else that you want to know, if there's a, there could be a story, that could be anything, you can always turn into a bonus episode to bless you guys with. And we are blessed as well to be able to, to put that info out there. Absolutely. Um, so if there isn't anything else in the house, <laughs> <laughs> we will move on. To the question of the day. So, what is afflicting you? We all have afflictions. There's that that's something that we can't deny, run away from. We all have afflictions. What is yours? And is it something that you're actually using to help make you better? Because that's all that's what God is always doing. He's always looking for a reason to make us better. If we would if we would receive it. When our kids leave toys and clothes and drive Miss Leticia crazy, <laughs> <laughs> there's always a lesson in it. But if we never, what what father would give their give their child a stone if they ask for bread? Mm. So in this season of life that you're in, allow yourself to receive what God is trying to give you, what He's trying to teach you. Because your afflictions will qualify you to stand before men that you never thought you would have stood before. Will allow you to speak in arenas that you will be able to have an impact and increase that you never saw. But just understand that your growth is directly tied to how you accept your afflictions. So, let us know what your afflictions are. Uh, tap in with us, comment below, you know what I'm saying? All those dope things that people do when they are a part of a tribe and when they really appreciate what is being given to them. I know we don't have a problem with our people. That's what we do. Any new people, we welcome you here, and we, we pray that you get something out of this that would help spark something in your heart as well as your mind to move and think differently. That is all I have for you guys uh, on this episode. I thank you once again for listening to the Wayne's World Podcast with Ammo and Randy C. Mays in the building. 
We encourage you guys to follow us on social media. Those links will be below. Uh, you know, I got a little little special treat, you know what I'm saying, for y'all to uh a way to chime in. We we trying to add some dynamics to the podcast. Yeah. But listen, you know how we end every podcast. Life is hard enough. So please, don't just live. Live elevated. Until next week. We love you. May the Lord keep you. We'll see you at the conference, Ken folk. Peace. <laughs> that way. Yeah.